And I think if you look at the long arc of history, I suspect that the things that would be remembered is the philosophical flavor of the ideas of physics and chemistry and computer science and mathematics. Like, I think the actual details will be shown to be incomplete or maybe wrong, but the philosophical intuitions will carry through much longer. There's a sense in which, if it's true that we haven't figured out most of how things work yes. currently, that uh, it'll all be shown as wrong and silly. It'd almost be a historical artifact, but the the human spirit, whatever, like the, the longing to understand the, the way we perceive the world, the way we conceive of it, uh, of our place in the world, those, those ideas will carry on. I completely agree. In fact, I believe that uh, almost, well, I believe that none of the principles or, or laws of physics we know today are exactly correct. All of them are approximations to something. They are better than the previous versions that we had, but none of them are exactly correct and none of them are gonna stand forever. So I agree that that's the process we are heading, we are improving. And yes, indeed, the thought process and that philosophical take is common. So when we look at you know older uh, uh, scientists, or maybe even all the way back to Greek philosophers and the things that the way they thought and so on, almost everything they said about you know nature was incorrect. <laughs> but the way they thought about it and many things that they were thinking is still valid today. For example, they thought about symmetry breaking. They were trying to explain the following. They were. This is a beautiful example, I think. They had figured out that the Earth is round. And they said, okay, Earth is round. They have, you know, they have seen the length of the shadow of a meter stick. And they had seen that if you go from the equator upwards north, they find that depending on how far away you are, that the length of the shadow changes. And from that, they have even they had even measured the radius of the Earth to good accuracy. That's brilliant, by the way, the fact that they did that. Very brilliant, very brilliant. So these Greek philosophers are very smart. And so uh, they had taken it to the next step. They asked, okay, so the Earth is round. Why doesn't it move? Mm -hmm. They thought it doesn't move. They, they they were looking around, nothing seemed to move. So so they said, okay, we have to have a good explanation. It wasn't enough for them to you know be there. So they really want to deeply understand that fact. And they come up with a symmetry argument. Mm -hmm. And the symmetry argument was, oh, if the earth is a spherical, it must be at the center of the universe for sure. So yeah. they said the earth is at the center of the universe. That makes sense. Actually. And they said, you know, if the earth is going to move, which direction does it pick? Any direction it picks, it breaks that spherical symmetry because mm -hmm. you have to pick a direction. Mm -hmm. And that's not good because it's not symmetrical anymore. So therefore, the Earth decides to sit put because it would break the symmetry. So, so they had the incorrect science. They thought Earth doesn't move. and they, But they had this beautiful idea that symmetry might explain it. Mm -hmm. But they were even smarter than that. Aristotle didn't agree with this argument. <laughs> he said, why do you think symmetry prevents it from moving? Because the preferred position? Not so. He gave an example. He said, suppose you are a person and you put, we put you at the center of a circle and we spread food around you on a circle around you, loaves of bread, let's say. Mm -hmm. And we say, okay, stay at the center of the circle forever. Are you going to do that just because of the symmetric point? No, you are going to get hungry. You're going to move towards one of those loaves mm -hmm. of bread despite the fact that it breaks the symmetry. So from this way, he tried to argue being at the symmetric point may not be the preferred thing to do. And this idea of spontaneous symmetry breaking is something we just use today to describe many physical phenomena. So spontaneous symmetry breaking is the feature that we now use. But this idea was there thousands of years ago, but applied incorrectly to the physical world, but now we are using it. So these ideas are coming back in different forms. So I agree very much that the thought process is more important and these ideas are more interesting than the mm -hmm. actual applications that people may find today. Did they use the language of symmetry and the symmetry yes. breaking and spontaneous symmetry breaking? That's really interesting. Yes. Because I, I could see uh, a conception of the universe that kind of tends towards perfect symmetry and is stuck there. Like they, not stuck there, but achieves that optimal and stays there. The idea that you would spontaneously break out of symmetry uh, like have these perturbations, j like jump out of symmetry and back. That's not. That's a really difficult idea to uh, to load into your head. Like right. wh where where does that come from? And and then and then the idea that you may not be at the center of the universe. Right. That is a really tough idea. Right. So symmetry sometimes is an explanation of 
being at the symmetric point is sometimes a simple explanation of yeah. many things. Like if you have a ball, um, a circular ball, then the bottom of it mm -hmm. is the lowest point. So if you put a you know pebble or something, it will slide down and go there at the bottom and stays there at the symmetric point because it's the preferred point, the lowest energy point. But if that same symmetric circular ball that you had had a bump on the on the bottom, mm -hmm. the bottom might not be at the center. It might be on a circle on the table. Yeah. In which case, the pebble would not end up at the center. It would be the lower energy point. It's symmetrical, but it breaks the symmetry once it picks a point on that circle. Yeah. So, so we can have symmetry reasoning for where things end up or symmetry breakings, like this example would suggest.